Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to take, talk about type assertion, okay? And so before we get into it though, it's kind of, I want to frame it a little bit. And so we're going to kind of look at some diagrams to try and get the idea and then we're going to look at the code, right? So what is it, what are you going to be doing in this section? We're going to see how you can sort of wrap a type within a type and then how you can discover what that hidden type is, which is something called a dynamic type. And, um, and we can look at type switching towards the end, okay? But, so let's, so I just, I just told you sort of what we're going to be looking at towards the end, but let's try to get an idea. So you so far, if we think about it, we have values on one side, and all values on expression have a type. So remember, value is just, I'm saying it could be some the results of an expression that you evaluate, right? And so we can have an expression, and we can store the computer result the value into some variable, but then they always have a type. So if you think of it on the left hand side, we always have all the possible types that we can have, whether they're named or unnamed types. And then you can have expressions that says I am of that particular type. And of course, you can have multiple values and expression of the same type, right? So you can have five and I have 10. And those are two different values. But the, the type of their, their type is int, or I can have the expression five plus nine. And that is also an integer. Um, the type of that expression is integer, right? It's going to evaluate to an integer type. So when we have a value or an expression and it's, um, or a variable, we can say it has a static type. It does not change throughout the life of your program. When you say i is of type int, you don't expect that i type to ever change to anything else. Later on in your program, if you try to or a complex number in there, it will fail. Um, so we say the type is static, as in fixed. Dynamic changing over time is something different. So when we think of the dynamic type, it's sort of like what we saw yesterday, where we had the int this function, and we said, so we're going to accept in my print function a type that is an empty interface. And then even though I said I'm expecting an empty interface, that type sort of hide or hid all the other, um, you know, the, the true type of all the other things that was being passed in. Once it got into the function, I still kind of could discover it. And I, when I want to print out, I could say, oh, I, this was an int and a person and all this other stuff. But the fact that I was able to pass it into the function, it seemed as though my real type was getting wrapped up. So that's my person, my Indian duck, my string, which is on the very far left there, the non-interface type, was getting wrapped up or get it enclosed in this interface type, which was the empty interface, so it could be passed into the function. And then, so my value and stuff, they're still there, and they sort of look like an empty interface in order for them to be passed into this function, if you kind of remember what we did yesterday, uh, what we did in the previous video, and then the real type was behind that. So that's what I'm trying to illustrate here by saying that my little purple triangle and my light blue triangles, they sort of look um, like interface values, but then when you sort of look at it more closely, there's the real type that is behind it that's not an interface. So enough talking. I sort of hopefully wanted to draw a picture to show um, how this is different than static type because here is almost like our type can change, okay? Because once you have a variable that you're going to be using for like a function parameter or even just a variable of a certain type, of a certain interface, for example, and the interface is a type. Remember that the interface is a type. So if I have a variable that is uh, its type is an interface, I can have that variable point to a bunch of other things that fulfill that interface. And so that one variable now look like if it's taken on other types. Okay, and that's where the dynamic type come in because at one part of the program it looked like it's an int, another part of the program it looked like a string. So it looked like if the thing type is changing. So let's go to the code because we can be here talking about this forever and just talking, even though picture is worth a thousand words, um, definitely seeing some code is probably worth 10,000. And so here I'm going to have this type, which is a non-interface type person. I'm going to get rid of this type, this interface type here, print um, printer. I'm going to leave my type interface duck, which is going to do some work and specify some things that can be done. But then I'm going to have a struct type here called Indian runner. Now, um, since I got rid of that, um, I can leave this because this implements the stringer interface. 
And so here's my Indian um, thing, and I'm going to have this guy, so you get out of here right for now. I'm gonna have my inner runner implement the Waddle interface. So Waddle, so I have Waddle up there, right? And it does not return a value, and duck. Waddling, okay? And I'm going to, it doesn't return, I'm going to do a print here. And then I am going to, um, so then I'm going to uh, new another one, and then um, let's call this quack. Okay, um, as a matter of fact, I like the idea of um, having my duck implementing the uh, the the printer, the um, stringer interface. So string, return string. I don't know why I take that out. It's printf and return that. And there we go. All right, so I have printer interface for both of my things. And here's the waddle interface. And so doc is waddling here. And I could just pass in my thing because I know that's going to get printed properly and that's there we go and here there we go also change this a little bit and um, quack it okay and there's my duck I'm an Indian runner and then um, I don't need this guy Oh, maybe yes, I do need that guy. But so now the other thing I can do is I want to do is implement the same interface for person. So um, yeah, geez, come on, help me out here. So I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna do command D, select that, and I'll do P person. Good, duck waddle, and then I'm gonna do here. Um, yep. So that works perfectly fine. I'm gonna do this. Command D. Um, no. I just do P. P. Okay. So now I have this type implementing um, that interface. My person type also implementing that interface. And so, all right. So I have um, Bob up there, and I'm going to now change this to. Speedy is an Indian runner, and his name, of course, is Speedy. All right, so let's get rid of this. All right, so, all right. So what do I have? All right, so I have these interfaces implemented, whatever, but here's a function, okay? And so this is what I was talking about. So if you notice, the, the, this variable here, O, represent anything that um, you can pass it as function. Now, if I change this specifically to, to say that, oh, it must be something that implements the duck interface, what we're saying is that when I call this function here, when I call my printer um, do duck stuff, let's call it do duck stuff, or use duck rather. When I call use duck, and I pass in Bob, and then I call use duck, and I pass in Speedy. These two are, this is of type person, this is of type Indian runner, two different types. We know they're two different types because we said before that two name types are different. This is a name type, it's different from this name type. So those are different types, but yet when we go to pass it into use duck, it's fine because they implement the duck interface. So at the time when this Bob is being passed here, um, the value of Bob is being passed here, it's somehow getting wrapped, it's it's the um, person who is getting wrapped around it is the duck sort of into duck type is get, sort of getting wrapped around it. And so it can pass in here. And now when I do a print out my printer or using duck, 
and I look at the type and the value, you're gonna see it all, it's gonna be person, and then it's gonna be, you know, um, Indian runner, right? And it seems like if it's no different from what we did yesterday, it seems that way, right? I just changed this from being the much broader empty interface to the more specific interface. So that's what I mean by your type is being, the type is being wrapped around it. So this type O is not a duck really, that's sort of like a static type. It's always gonna be a duck for O, but what is O's dynamic type? Whose dynamic type is what I'm printing out here, right? And so there are a couple of ways that you can get to the dynamic type of something like O. Um, you can say, um, for example, var the type T for O, and is it really the type that it's supposed to be? Is type um, Indian runner, for example, is it uh, Indian runner? equals to, and this is where the type assertion, this is the new thing that I'm, that I'm talking about, is to say the expression, O, that, and then in parentheses, you ask for what type you want, which is Indian runner, right? Now, if we go look at the specification, we were looking at types before, and then here's type assertion. There we go. And you could see the expression for that. For an expression X of interface type, which is what we have, X in our case is O, right? For an expression X of an interface type, which is for expression X, which is an interface type, and a type T, the primary expression X that of T, like a function call, assert that X is not null and that the value stored in X is of type T. Notice the value stored in X. Even though we know X is really of interface type duck, the value stored in there, the type of that value stored in O, is really, we wanna check and see if it's of Indian runner. And if that is the case, all right? If that is the case, if it is an Indian runner, is Indian runner, ah, come on. Is it Indian runner? If that is the case, then we could print out, you know, something that says FMT that print LN. I have an as the type of the value in O. All right. So for now, I'm going to come into this, right? If that's not the case, if that's not the case, um, we can also check and see var um, t, you know, is it, um, you know, um, a person? So it's person. And we can say colon equals, uh, well, not colon equals, just equals. Um, is it o or expression of type person? I'm going to check. And so this is where you're being able to check dynamically because since o can sort of contain values of any of these types, um, to be able to discover it at runtime is where the power comes in. Because if is a person, then um, you know I can print out a message that says I have a person. All right? Um, now, when we were doing it before, we just had a print statement, just printing out stuff. But now we can actually test it. So let's see if this works. Let's see if this works. And so it would work. All right? I uh, would say T is redeclared oh, come on people um, so if I use this I'll get rid of that problem because it's gonna say this person is new T is already declared but since it's oh, at least one thing in that statement is new it's gonna work where is that oh yeah because up here I stored Indian runner variable I essentially I'm saying T is gonna be type Indian runner and so no I can't reuse that so uh, turn it all right, so um, so this is P for person. Uh, let's use here um, I for Indian runner. Um, it's probably going to complain that oh, it can't. Um, it's not being used. And let's do P. Okay. So so yes, if I didn't care about the type, I could use underscore. Okay. All right. So of course this, I could use var thing this way. Okay. So now when I run. I can see that um, 
I have a person as the type, which is the first call, and it's as value stored in O. And then the next time I have an Indian runner. Um, you might not be able to see that. Uh, let's clear our screen. All right, run this again. Run this again, and as you can see, okay, type assertion. That's what we're working on. All right, our type assertions. So now we see an expression that allows us to discover the dynamic or what's hidden really inside of whole air. When we get a O type here, we don't know what it is. It could be a person, it could be a duck, it could be anything that implements that. Okay, and so that allows us to, to check it. Um, okay, so now you can see we're asking the question, is this there? And if we get okay or true, we know that our I does point to that thing, right? And remember, the type of I is Indian runner. There's no type of I is not duck. I right? type of I is Indian runner, and we can sort of prove that by doing this and saying I is of type I Indian runner, and if we sort of um, do this here, percent. T and then we put I there and then we make this F and we do a new line right you're gonna see that when I rerun this you're gonna see that well now it's actually doing the value which I didn't want it to do the percent T uh, come on people uh, yep there we go this one main Indian runner so it gives me the type and so the type of I is that, right? So it does get to the underlying, uh, when it creates a new variable of with a copy of whatever the value is in of O, we can get to, we use in the same exact type. Hence why when I tried to reuse it here, it told me that, oh, your T there was Indian runner and you couldn't reassign person to it. Okay, so this is kind of cumbersome, right? Because with this, what it means is that, um, what I can do is I have to test each thing and I can write a switch statement on it. Like, and I could say if, and I could combine the if statement here, you know, so I can say if var that and, you know, semicolon here, I can, that's a, that's a, um, I could combine the, the switch statement. This is the if statement that gets, you know, multiple assignments and then I can do else. And then I could do, you know, else I don't unknown type. Unknown or unsupported type. Come on. Right? And so that looks like almost like if it's an else statement, um, like a switch statement. Can you remember a switch statement? It's just like having multiple statements. So where did I make a mistake? Uh, get this back in line over there. So if var da da, da equals to that, and then test the last this assignment. So remember, for a statement, we can always do like a simple expression, and then we can test that expression. So there we go. That let me see what am I missing? Um, shouldn't be missing anything else. Uh, um, should be doing some other focus format formatting here for me. And then this is elf if p colon that person and then yep semicolon between that and that is person. Yeah, so this should work. Let me see why is it not working. Unexpected var? Why is that saying unexpected var? You can usually use var here. And this thing is silly. So so there we go. Alright. And so now um, this works like a, a switch statement, but we can just substitute this out for an actual switch statement. Instead of doing this cumbersome thing, we can actually substitute this out for a switch statement and just do switch on this value, yeah. switch on that value, take this out. Of course, what I really want to know is is this a person? So I just do case person. And then if it is, I do that stuff. And then here I'm doing the default if it's not a person. 
or it's not a Indian runner. And of course here, I don't want to, I'm not specifying what I'm looking for. So I say type. So I'm asking what type is it? And then here I'm doing case. Is it Indian runner? And if it is, then do all this stuff, right? So let's see. So now look at this. When I use it as a switch statement, um, the type assertion changed slightly. Instead of saying, what is it I'm looking for? I, I get to use this special keyword here. Well, we've been using the keyword type to define a type, but I get to use it in this special way here in the switch statement by specifying it this way. And now what you see is I can do case on this da 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 da. -da. And of course, um, I can easily add to the case. I can say case int. So built-in types work the exact same way too. Right. And so if I run, let's change our code now to pass uh, use duck. Um, and I'll put five, but of course my use duck interface, I'm not going to use just duck. I'm going to say, this is an empty interface. So um, let's keep O and then I say interface and I'm going to use the empty interface instead. And so this gives us back to like our print statement, how to print, um, print line and all these guys would work in terms of when you pass different type, they could implement something for the known type and then for the unknown type, they call upon that type's that string method. And when that doesn't exist, then it tried to in, do some reflection, which we haven't talked about. There's a reflection package in Golang that allows you to interrogate a type to find out how it's defined. And so here we go. Let's run this. And so, hey, where is this undefined? 38, 39, 40. Arg. Okay. Um, so let's put, put our O there. So, right, and so as you can see, I have a person, I have duck, and then for integer, um, we're saying that O is an integer. We didn't print out what value that is, but you know it's whatever was passed in, right? And so we saw two ways of doing type assertions. The first is to be able to say, I want to ask if a certain expression has a dynamic type of some specific type I'm interested in. And then you can store not only a new, create a new variable with that type, if it's correct, but you also get to know if it's true by you get a Boolean value of okay or false. Um, the nice thing about that is, is if you ask if a certain type is in there and it's not, your program doesn't crash. Okay. And the nice thing with a type assertion as opposed to type trying to cast is that you're asking if it's there and then you get a nice way of dealing with it. Whereas if you actually try to cast it and it doesn't work, then you can, um, of course, at runtime, if it doesn't cast properly because it doesn't have the underlying type, then you can your program would crash. So it's better to use a type assertion to ask that question. Like, does this expression or this value have that type? Okay. And and of course, remember that the expression of, or the value you're using the, is X A or O is of interface type. Okay, that's because that's the only time you can really add something else behind this type. Like if this was an int here specified as an int, I couldn't pass anything else but an integer. So there's no this code does not make sense. I, I, there's nothing else that could be passed to this function. If this was person, right? Again. I can, couldn't pass anything else but a person, so I know exactly what type this is. Um, and so, and similarly, if this was Indian runner, I couldn't pass anything else but an Indian runner. The only time this makes sense is when this is an interface, because as we know, um, it's an interface, then the t it could be something else. It could be anything that implements an interface. And so it could be a name interface like this, or the, you know, empty interface, okay? It's probably the two, the only two times you're going to really want to be interested in knowing what, especially when you use like an empty interface because anything else can be passed in. So you might want to be able to do some type assertion. 
if you're gonna use just a named interface, I found that out. I don't. I, I already sort of narrowed my scope already by saying I expect a duck. So anything that is a duck, I don't really care what the underlying specific type is really. It's when you use like an empty interface, then you want to do things like that. When we get around to using like the JSON package and stuff, and you can see that oh, those top sort of packages make very good use of allowing you to define, they accept an empty interface of your type, and then underneath they can interrogate it to know how to um, package stuff. But that's much further down the road. I hope this sort of makes sense. I tried to illustrate it with a picture, and then so I slowly walk through from. Well, we started left off yesterday. We had a function you could pass multiple, pass multiple different types to it to show in how you can use it on one statement and then build up on that using multiple if else statements, then turning that into a switch statement, and then much easier using this clever uh, way of uh, that syntactic sugar. So, hopefully, that makes sense. Hopefully, you get it. Um, keep watching, keep giving me feedback. Appreciate it. Thank you. Even the ones that are tongue down, thumbs down. Yes, um, not all the videos are perfect. I understand that, but I'll keep trying to make sure that every video is really, really good. But um, do forgive me when I falter. Um, but yes, I still appreciate the feedback. And continue to subscribe. Continue to spread the word. Take care. Well, if you subscribe already, you can't subscribe again. But continue. You know what I mean. Continue to spread the word and ask other people to subscribe. Take care. See you in the next video. All right, bye.